Hello everybody. Happy uh, Monday night. I'm going to apologize now for not even letting you know that I was not going to go live last night um, due to the holiday. I hope you all had a wonderful um, Labor Day weekend. Last night my daughter um, celebrated her fourth birthday so we had family over and I knew I wasn't going to be able to come live last night. So here I am. Um, so you hopefully can watch the playback of this at another time. Um, and I was going to come on a little bit earlier, but um, in Ohio we had a huge storm. And I went to school to take pictures and was stuck at school due to the storm. So um, here I am. At, it's a little bit past nine. And I'm really, really excited about um, text to text and this unit. Uh, I don't think it has all the bells and whistles, perhaps, as the other ones, but um, I really feel like the content is awesome, and I, I also feel like the kids are going to totally understand um, text to text when we're done. So um, the theme I chose was farm, it, stories that have to do with farm, farm animals. Um, they are all fiction stories. And I debated between the Three Little Pigs and Farm, um, but we did Farm last year, and we do the Three Little Pigs when we do fairy tales. So that is why I chose the farm. So I'm not sure if you've ever heard um, of Click Clack Moo or Giggle Giggle Quack or Doobie Doobie Moo, but those are the three uh, Doreen Cronin stories I chose. And then I picked two Margie Palatini stories my, one of my all-time favorite books ever, which is Piggy Pie, and the other story I really love is called Oink. So um, I'm going to get started and explain to you um, how I kind of mapped out text to text. So in order to compare um, two texts to one another, you can have obviously ideas in your in your head of stories. But what I thought I would do is the Friday before um, the week, I was going to send a note home, which is also included in this um, goodie packet, explaining that on Monday um, we were going to begin a farm unit. And if you had any story or book at home that had anything to do with farm, farm animals, to bring it in. And that was how we were going to kind of start off our week was um, to compare what we brought in to the story that I'm going to share with them. So at this time, I'm going to flip the camera around and show you um, what I prepared. And there is my family room mess. Hang on. Okay. So here is our anchor chart, text to text, and when a book reminds you of another book. And then I have prepared several um, different posters. So this is text to text in both, and then I have them in larger versions. And I actually um, printed pictures for you to see how this all looks in a classroom on pocket charts. So this is text and then two texts. Um, I included this because because I want the kids to tell me why and um, I also included self and world because these are previous topics that we have discussed so I wanted to be able to bring those up as well um, some of the things that I'm going to be comparing amongst the two texts are the author the setting which we have talked about setting we've talked about characters and then theme. Now we haven't really talked about theme, but what I'm just going to say to the children is, you know, what is the story mostly about? What's the big picture here? And then I also made um, two cards, similarities and differences anchor charts. And finally, these cards on this ring are great questions that you can ask for any book that um, will lead you to text to text. Um, digging deeper. So I will keep these out and pull those out whenever um, need be for extra questions. So I'm going to get started and share with you the first story. And the first one that I chose was called Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type by Doreen Cronin. Um, this is really cute. There's actually a scholastic uh, video that you can watch that goes with this book. Um, it's about 
cows and hens that go on strike because they want electric blankets. And Duck is kind of the neutral party in the story and he delivers these messages to Farmer Brown and he refuses to give them blankets. And then finally they trade the typewriter for their blanket, blankets and so they get what they want. And then in the end, Duck wises up and decides he's gonna ask for some things as well. So with this story, um, as you can see here, there is a picture. So I just gathered all my farm books here. So I'm gonna have all my kids bring in their farm books. And I will, um, this is a pocket chart in my classroom. So I will read the story to the children and we'll put the text poster up. We're talking about Click Clack Moo. We'll list the characters, the setting, the author, and the theme. And then with their books, they can tell how it reminded them of this story. So um, we'll put, I put text over here and this is their because. And I'll use sticky notes to kind of show um, how they related. So if somebody brought in Doobie Doobie Moo, they might say it's the same author. Or Big Chickens, there were chickens in both stories. Or um, Rosie's Walk had a hen and, and so did um, Click Clack Moo. So this is what my chart would look like for the first day. And then um, there are specific questions for the story on cards. And then here's just a real life um, picture of what the cards look like and the um, story card. Now I do have to apologize for some reason. We have new printers at our school and I'm totally frustrated with them. They are printing things um, crooked. So please note that my stuff is not crooked. It just came off the printer that way. So here are some of the activities I had for um, cows that type. Now we've already done retelling, so sometimes you're gonna notice that I'm gonna revisit a concept we've already done um, because I think that's important to review. So I include things that we've already talked about. So for Click Clack Moo, um, they can retell the story. And then, I'm having difficulty here again. And then there's different um, text to text activities. Now this one, I did a text to self and text to text. Again, we've already done text to self, but it's a good review. This is just for text to text. Um, this would allow them to compare Click Clack Moo to the story that they brought in, list some similarities and differences. Um, uh, a different thing, they could pick any book or the book they brought in, talk about the setting, the characters, how they're alike and illustrate. And then there, for your children who are not really writing yet, you can do pictures and label on this page. And then writing. So for writing this whole unit, I'm going to begin to talk about an opinion. And we sing a little song in um, my room, and I'm not really sure where I got it from, but it goes like this, and I apologize, my voice is not the greatest. Um, my opinion is how I feel, yes it is, yes it is, yes it is. And we sing that all the time, even at the end of the day when we're doing our little fact and opinion. So here's a survey we do. And it says, would you give Farmer Brown, um, and it should not say that, so I need to fix that. It should say, would you give the cows electric blankets? See, this is so awesome. I do this with you guys. Find my own mistakes. Um, and they, do you see these little circles up here? This is intentional. So I tell my students when we do surveys, they can only survey 10 people. Every time they survey somebody, they put an X in the circle. That way we're not out surveying forever. They make their tally marks here, they answer the questions here, and then they color in the graph. This is a fun, like pre-pre-writing activity, completely optional. Um, and I'm gonna put this aside so I can fix that. Uh, so here's how my writing looks. I do pre-writing, and this really gets my students um, into a beginning, a middle, and an end, which we've already talked about with retelling, and I, and I give them um, the conclusion you'll see on the paper. So um, what I'm asking them is their opin in their opinion, in the end, I think, okay, so in the story, Doc wants a diving board. So I want to know their opinion. Do they think he gets the diving board? So in the end, I think, and they're going to tell me their opinion about um, Duck. They're gonna give me one reason why, 
And then here's their conclusion. They don't have to do it, it's already provided for them. So in the end, I think Duck gets his diving board. Because on the last page, you can see him jumping in the pond. That is my opinion. And then we use this to then write our story over here. And I know it seems kind of prompted, but it will turn your children into amazing writers, if you trust me on this. So there are two uh, obviously different writing pages. And then if you didn't want to do that prompt, there's also Dear Farmer Brown, and the cows can ask for something else. So they can write a letter from the cows with the two different kinds of writing. All right, on to the next story I chose was Giggle, Giggle, Quack. And this time Farmer Brown goes on vacation and leaves his brother Bob in charge of the farm animals. And again, Duck is up to no good. He doesn't have a typewriter, but this time he has a pencil in his mouth. And they are writing notes um, to Bob, even in, and acting like those were the ones that Farmer Brown left. So it's kind of a funny story. Um, and the pigs get a bubble bath, they order pizza, they say it's movie night, they get away with all these shenanigans. Um, so that is what Giggle Giggle Quack is all about. Again, the same author, illustrator, um, but there's some differences. So in, inside again, you um, have some discussion cards and then the anchor chart. And then this is what would happen on day two. So day two would be all about comparing Giggle, giggle, quack to click, clack, moo. So I'm going to try to kind of zoom in here so you can see my chart. And this is where I would start with the kids. I would um, fill out like the text. Who are the characters? So we put click, clack, moo characters. Um, and then giggle, giggle, quack characters. The setting, the author, and the theme. And then any extra cards go down here. And once we've created this chart, then we bring the stuff over here and we sort them. What are the similarities? And so the cards that are the same go at the top, and then the cards that are different go at the bottom. So you're already beginning to um, kind of fill out a Venn diagram, even though it's not a real Venn diagram. So you're sorting similarities and differences between the two stories. Um, so that activity right there that you see will happen the rest of the week. Um, and that's just kind of how I laid it out. And I think it'll be um, a great visual for them. Of course, if they think of other things, you don't just have to use the cards I give you. You could add sticky notes. I'm sure they'll have many other ideas that um, are not included. So again, we have a retail with the retail cards and text to self, text to text, and then um, just text to text and similarities and differences. And they could even list here and use your chart that you had and just put um, Google or do getting all my books confused. Um, click, clack, moo here, or you can do it to any story you want. That's why it's blank. I didn't want you to feel like you had to compare the two that I'm comparing or do it in the same order. Again, these are all very similar. Um, okay, would you go on vacation if you were Farmer Brown is the survey question for this one. And then they will ask each other. And then here is your opinion. If I were Farmer Brown, I wouldn't go on vacation, and then a reason why the animals don't know how to behave, that is my opinion, or I would go on vacation and give your opinion why. Again, different kinds of writing paper, and then I thought it would be cute for them. Um, the book does, I think Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but doesn't talk about what Friday night is, so I thought it would be fun for them to come up with their own idea of what the animals might ask for on Friday night. And then on to Doobie Doobie Moo, which I didn't mean to include all these papers, so let me get rid of these. Here is Doobie Doobie Moo. This time, the animals um, find out there is a talent show at the county fair, and they sneak and perform in the talent show. Really cute. So for this story, um, again, the same items would be included, and this time, this would be day three for me. You're going to compare Doobie Doobie Moo to Giggle Giggle Quack. The same format using the cards here and then dragging them down to make your similarities and differences here. And then there's a retail and the same kind of activities. 
get to something that's a little different here. Um, I don't believe, oh, there is a survey for this one. Who do you think should win the talent show? This one's a little different. It's not a just yes or no, two answers, four choices. So um, the four animals who listed here perform, so they can go ahead and ask who they think should win the talent show. They never say who wins the talent show, but they do give a hint. Doreen Cronin does give a hint. So um, in the end, I think blank should win the talent show. The reason why, and that is my opinion. And then they just rewrite it. So when my kids rewrite this too, they write this whole sentence and then we check it off. We did it. Then they write their middle and over here and we check it off. And then we write, rewrite the conclusion and check it off. So this is kind of like a working paper to kind of keep them on track. Um, then there's a text to self. If I were in the talent show, they can write about what they would do, what song they would sing to. Okay, moving on to a different author, Margie Palatini, and I'm not sure I'm saying her last name correct. This story is called Oink, and it is about two lazy pigs on a farm, and the neighbors are fed up, and the neighbors happen to be other farm animals, and they are sick of these pigs um, being stinky, smelly, and having their place look messy. So they decide to boss them around, but in the end, the pigs don't do it the way they want to do it, so the other animals end up doing all the work. And the pigs are really happy, and they have a clean um, house, and they are a pig pen, and they've taken baths, and they have food, and their fence is all painted, and they didn't do any of the work. And so they kind of trick the other farm animals. So um, that is the gist of that story. Again, the same format here. Now this one, once you do this, one, you'll notice that there are more differences than there are similarities because we're changing authors here. So it's kind of good to um, not always do just the same author and there's a lot more differences and it's kind of harder for them to find the similarities, which you don't want to just, you want them to work at it a little bit. So um, that is why I decided not to do all the same author. I wanted them to realize you can make a text to text connection without it being the same author. Um, and then similar activities um, for Oink, the opinion is in the end, I think, and I really want them to tell me what they think about the pigs. What is their opinion about the pigs? Are they smarter than the other animals thought? Or are they just lazy? What is their opinion? Um, and then again, very similar activities. I think there's one kind of different one. Oh, this kind of goes with piggy pie. It should be in the back here, but I did include one Venn diagram if you decide you do want to do it, and blanket ones in the packet as well. Okay, so the last story is piggy pie, and if you have never read the story, you have to get it. It's hilarious. The thing I love about this story is there are different things twisted within it. There's Old MacDonald had a farm. There's the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. Um, there's Over the River and Through the Woods song, so it's got all kinds of things. And then the illustrations are just, I mean, phenomenal. This book's pretty old. I've had it for a while, but you can see how gorgeous the illustrations are. So Rich the Witch wants some piggy pie, and she decides to go to Old MacDonald's farm. The pigs find out she's coming, and they dress up as different animals, pretending that there are no pigs. And really super cute. So there are again question cards and your anchor chart supplies. And again, this time you're comparing Piggy Pie and Oink. Now they're written by the same author, but have a different illustrator. So can talk about that too. Um, and again, they have more differences than similarities, but a few more similarities than the other story. So this, uh, this story is another one that leaves you hanging in the end. In the very end, Gritch meets a wolf that's been chasing the pigs for years, and they both decide that they're going to have each other over for dinner. So it kind of leaves you thinking, like, what are they thinking? Um, and I did include a cute little thinking picture card in here. Let me see if I can find it. But anyways, um, so again, opinion writing. See how 
like happy or happy this and this crazy um, you can make a list of how they think piggy pie is made here's that paper I was telling you about so rich, rich is thinking something and the wolf is thinking something else so they can tell you what they're thinking and then the same text to text worksheet again I do a lot of similar things because I think repetition helps the kids feel successful and it's one last thing you really want to focus on the skill versus teaching them how to do a different format of something so finally i do have a little cumulative project so on friday um, i'm going to have the kids bring in two books that they think are similar and they're just going to get up and share how they're similar how they're different um, i did say that if they wanted to do this comparing sheet they could and i'll just this will be optional in my room. I really don't do a ton of homework. I feel like parents are busy enough as it is, but I do know there's kids that love to share and I, it's almost like show and tell about sharing and learning and I have really enjoyed my Fridays where we've sat down together and done some fun things. So I definitely will be doing this. And because I thought of this, I went back to the two previous weeks where there was text to self and text to world and I added this same project where they bring in a book that reminds them of something in their life for text to self and then another one for text to world. So I did, um, I guess as I go, I make changes too. I, I thought that was a fun idea to do. So, oh, and finally, um, we have some cute little crafts here. These can go with any of the stories. I might just have my kids um, split up and do different farm animals. Um, every table do a different one or something like that. That way we have a little bit of everything. And then some other fun things I might do is put like a barn by my, make a barn kind of near my door to get their excitement. Um, in some of my centers I have corn and different things that are farm related just to kind of get them excited and make the room look nice. So we have a pig and duck and the cow and the chicken and the sheep. So that basically is text to text and um, that will get you through all three text to self, text to world, and text to text. So um, eventually we will be reviewing all three of them again throughout the year. Um, I do want to tell you that on Friday, if you're still listening to me, we did beginning, middle, and end for retail and I had them go in groups and the kids picked a book that we've already read. So I kept collecting the books that I had read to them. They got in their groups and they um, presented a story, beginning, middle, and end in front of the class and I recorded them. So I'm going to share a few of those on our um, page just so you can see how they turned out. They weren't a little nervous, so I don't think they told as much as they knew, but um, I still think having them present and share in front of each other is such a great idea. So um, it's tomorrow's already Tuesday. We'll see how the week goes. I'm getting closer to um, implementing guided reading with my kids, so I'm really excited to share that with you and and my math. I, I'm just like overwhelmed. I'm sure most of you are too. So. I'll do as much as I can this week to um, share some different ideas with you, and please feel free to share your own ideas as well. Um, have a great week. I'll see you next Sunday, if not sooner.